Hi, and welcome in today's episode where I am going to show you how you can fix an AIO on a budget and basically even upgrade it. In case maybe, uh, you know, it's water pump has failed. This is what failed on my AIO right here. This is the Pure Loop 360's pump. Of course, a subcomponent of the whole system, not uncommon for them to go out at all. But first, let me show you exactly what happened to mine and how exactly you can diagnose your system and see exactly what component is broken and see how you can fix it. What can happen to an AIO? Well, basically first you have to check that your system doesn't run dry. I mean, over time evaporation does actually occur and uh, one actually nice feature about this system with Be Quiet, it's actually this fill port right here that you can open up and basically reinsert more liquid into your system. And one way to actually figure out if, uh, if everything is okay in there and if you have enough water in there is to actually maybe take it out and slush it around a bit. And if you can feel water slushing around, that means that some evaporation has actually happened and basically you have to refill the amount of liquid in there. Another failure point is actually this CPU cooler right here because inside there are actually very tiny passages for the water to pass through in order to increase the surface area and have a better dis uh, heat dissipation. So those can get blocked over time by crud inside the, the system. Maybe you have used some incorrect type of liquid in there that basically allowed for some bacteria growth and that can definitely attach itself to the very minute channels in there and can cause blockages of the liquid and thus of course it can cause your CPU to get really toasty. Another point of failure is of course the water pump and a very low tech approach into trying to diagnose this is to basically feel around and put your hand on the pump assembly and try and feel for any slight vibrations because vibrations means that this impeller is actually spinning and if you don't feel any of those vibrations that might mean or could be an indication of a broken down water pump. Okay, so I've taken the pump out of its housing completely and this is it right here. It's actually still powered on and the impeller isn't spinning. It feels springy. I'm not sure what that is all about, but uh, it doesn't work. So it's bye-bye for sure. There's nothing mechanically stuck in it and it doesn't seem to be any sort of way to actually service this and open it up even further. So right now I'll just call it a goner and you know, that will be the end of that. And now it's time to upgrade it with a much more beefy guy. And by much more, take a look at this. I'm insane. I think this is about five times the size of this guy and it's definitely huge. Not to be used in an AIO, but I'm gonna Frankenstein the living out of this AIO and make it a monster. It's gonna look nice in the end. I'm not really sure. I'm not every YouTuber out there, but it's definitely gonna do the job. And if I wanna upgrade my CPU further down the line with a behemoth, I won't have any problem keeping it cool. Another point of failure would be, of course, your radiator so this means either your fans try and see that your fans are working they're not full uh, with dust or anything like that and maybe just have a look like i have right here between the fins and see that there's nothing blocking the fins because this can also you know block the transfer of heat and energy and that also reduces efficiency in your aio all right so let's get cracking and fix this guy because i really need to use my pc right now Budget build, we are going to just be using some regular hose, a cutter for that hose. Obviously, this is going to be a 10 millimeter diameter, some zip ties, obviously. Why not, of course, some adapters between the old and new line and optional if you have it, a heat gun. So, uh, yeah, I bought this hose, which was actually very, very cheap. It is pretty good for our purposes. It doesn't have to be reinforced. There's not a whole lot of back pressure uh, inside the system. And even though this one might, th might uh, seem a bit uh, thicker, that's not a problem. I'm pretty sure about that. And it was only a couple of bucks for around one meter of 10 millimeter diameter hose. 
which I have right here. So this being said, my plan of action is to actually keep one of the lines original. That's because its fittings are actually attached quite well and I don't want to mess around with breaking free these fittings. Um, this is not going to be an issue so much here because this is aluminum and the fittings are actually metal and I will be able to remove them without damaging the fittings here. But the fittings on the side of the CPU cooler right here uh, are actually fitting into some sort of plastic and I don't want to risk the, uh, well, I don't want to risk the plastic cracking and breaking and rendering this CPU block unusable otherwise. So, you know, I don't want to use any sort of epoxy and stuff like that to fix plastics. So, uh, yeah, I basically want to keep the original fittings. They did a good job and I'm pretty sure they're going to continue to do a good job. And this being said, I just want to use and basically repair this broken line between where the pump used to go and of course the rest of the system. So I'm going to measure the distance between here and here and cut an appropriate size length hose that I'm going to be using to replace this broken line right here where the pump used to sit. Alright, so taking out the tape measure I can see that there are approximately 40 centimeters of length that I have to cut from the new tube. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now that we have the tube right here, let's go ahead and remove this old broken water pump from the system so that we can clear more room for where the tube is going to go. I will be using these type of fittings right here as well as these are basically a reduction between the 10 millimeters of inside diameter of this uh, new pump hose right here and the 5 millimeter one that I have right here on the existing line. These are actually very cheap. You can make them yourself on a 3D printer or you can find them online. I did find them under plumbing and also for the auto industry you can find a lot of these fittings which are actually just a few dollars each. Yep, so just like that I've removed the old water pump which uh, or I should say it is the old water pump assembly or the housing and this alongside with the water pump used to be what powered the whole system and now is just basically gone. So this is basically going to be my entry point and connection point to the old system using the new line. Just like that I have a connection between the old point and the new pump hose right here. And I will, I will be trimming down the existing line right where it meets the old line because I have to splice in this connector that goes in between the two. So now we have successfully Frankenstein ourselves a new water pump which is huge compared to the old one onto the lines and basically connected to the CPU cooler with the radiator and that's about it for the hardware. We could add a few more fittings here just to make things tight and uh, make sure that there will be no water leakage once we fill the system but that's mostly it. So this right here is the actual end result with the pump installed right there. It's a bit of a hack job, I know, but you know what, I like the way it looks, even with those zip ties that are really hardcore and redneck, but you know what, it's made by me and it's made for me and I'm really happy with the end results. Um, it's really good, I can really feel the pump working. Uh, this is the original CPU block right there with the original plastic fittings uh, that meet with the original metal fittings for well these um, this original tube that I have left in there and the hack job also um, you know it's more or less like the other side there that meets the radiator where I just used the original length tube with the original connectors because I thought that that's the way to go 
and it does a fantastic job. It keeps this CPU rather cool. It's cooler than before, obviously, because that pump is way, way bigger than uh, the original one. And this radiator does its job with the uh, three fans on the top here. Uh, well, they're configured in a uh, pull-push configuration, but, you know, it works just fine for me. In the end, I am over the moon with how it turned up. Cosmetically, yes, it's all up for debate, but you know what? It's fine for me. I definitely like it, and that's all that matters. I don't want to be harsh, but that is the reality. And uh, you know what? I have overall spent around $100 or so, the vast majority of the budget being spent, of course, on that EK water pump. I will leave a link down in the bottom so you can find it yourself. This was just something locally available to me. And I did went ahead and purchase it because I want to upgrade my CPU and the whole rig further down the line and maybe even do a custom loop on it. And that's pretty perfect for that. The overall pain in the butt was definitely to refill this AIO. And well, even though I did it, I will not recommend it doing my way. That's why I didn't, you know, do a detailed uh, instruction set on how to do that. I'm pretty sure there are people out there who are more than capable of showing you a right way of doing it instead of my wrong way. But in the end, I was out of the woods and managed to do it myself, even using that refill port on this AIO to basically remove all the remaining air bubbles. And I am happy with the results. As per what I use to fill up my system, I just basically use some car antifreeze that's very good for high temperatures and low temperatures. That's not going to be a case for a PC. Anyway, not in the normal use case. And some distilled water. You can definitely add some growth agents in there. Or I should say some anti-growth agents in there. But I haven't yet seen anything to grow inside a very aging old antifreeze system inside a car so i would imagine that the concentrate for the antifreeze is more than enough to keep any bacterial growth from happening in there my cpu runs very cool now it's not noisy at all i mean it's not more noisy than my original pump i couldn't hear my original pump and i can't hear this pump either just because i have a lot of fans going on into this rig but you know what it's a full-size tower and i do expect to hear something from it especially when doing video edits or playing on this computer and it doesn't really bother me at all guys thank you so much for being so awesome and sticking around with me in this video and if you have learned anything well basically a sub and a comment or a like down in this video box below would be awesome and also consider helping out the patreon channel as well link is going to be down in the bio where you also have a chance to win yourself a brand new gpu thank you guys once again see you in the next time stay awesome